So you've just started at uni, you go into your lectures, there's all these ideas floating around and then it hits you. No one's actually told you how you're meant to learn this stuff. So let me talk you through that. Hello everyone, welcome to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago, I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. I'm doing a series of videos trying to answer the kind of questions that new students typically ask me as a personal tutor. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the process that you should go through when you're trying to learn stuff. So you're sitting in your lectures or you're doing your reading or you're in your seminars and you're hearing all these ideas and information floating around. Is that all you have to do to actually learn this stuff and kind of use it in your essays and exams? Or is there more to it than that? Okay, so I'm going to talk you through that stuff. If this sounds good to you, give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. So this question, how do I learn stuff? It might kind of sound like a bit of a philosophical question, like, oh, here's a philosopher just trying to make simple stuff difficult. How do you learn stuff? Don't you just sit there and you hear stuff and you think about it? And But I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the philosophical question of how you learn things. I'm talking practically. What steps do you go through to actually learn all of the information that you're being told in your lectures? And how do you learn it most efficiently? And in particular, how do you make best use of the time that you've got? You're going to have loads of demands on your time, social and academic and whatever. So you want to be as efficient as possible with your study time. So I'm going to talk you through two methods that are going to help you make the best, most efficient use of your study time. First one is to use targeted reading. OK, so what do I mean here? Well, often what happens, particularly in essay based subjects in arts and humanities, you know, English, theology, philosophy, that kind of stuff, you will study a topic and your lecturer will give you a, a reading list, which kind of looks a bit like a bibliography in a book. It kind of goes on and on and on, covering like hundreds of years worth of literature. And there's like, I don't know, 15 books on there. And you're kind of thinking, well, am I meant to read all of that? If, if I do read all of that, which would probably be impossible in the time, how do I actually extract the information from that? And if I can't read all of it, maybe I don't need to read any of it. And, you know, you kind of get confused about exactly what you're going to be doing. That kind of way of thinking through things isn't helpful at all. What you need to do is you need to get good advice on specific things to read from your lecturer. OK, so if you've got a good, helpful lecturer, they are going to give you that advice up front, OK, they're going to say, OK, this week I want you to read this particular bit from this book and this particular bit from this paper. And that's it. Don't read any more. Just focus in on those. That's good advice. But you can always ask for, for extra if you want to take it a little bit further. If you're not getting that specific targeted advice from your from your lecturer or from your tutor, ask for it. OK, the way to do that is drop them an email or after class, ask them and say, what I want to do is dot, dot, dot. OK, so you're in your philosophy of mind lecture and you've heard this argument, uh, this Descartes argument about mind body dualism. And there was this bit that you didn't really get about like the modal argument for the separation of mind and body as two different substances. You want to find out more about that. OK, so maybe you get the kind of gist of the argument, but there was a bit of modal logic in there and you didn't quite get. So you want some reading that explains that particular thing. So you say to the lecturer, can you recommend one piece of reading that takes me through that argument in a way that's suitable for the first year? Don't be shy about asking for something specific. Um, your lecturer will probably know off the top of their head. Yep, you want to go and read this. You want to go and read that. That works out really good for you because if they can give you like one chapter or maybe even one like short passage to read, you're not going to waste your time by reading the wrong stuff, stuff that's not helpful. So basically what we're doing there is we're not wasting our time kind of shopping around, like browsing through the library or kind of crawling through YouTube, trying to find the stuff that's going to help you. You go straight to the thing that is going to be most helpful, according to your lecturer. And let's just say we, we trust them because they're the expert. 
So you put all your time into trying to get to grips with a bit that they've recommended. Even if that thing is a difficult piece of reading and the, the one I was just talking about, like modal arguments for mind-body dualism, there's a lot of complex stuff going on there, but you can put all of your time into trying to get to grips with that thing rather than wasting it trying to find the literature that you need. Typically, I mean, I guess not all the time, but typically in my experience in essay-based subjects, the quality of the essay isn't really helped by reading loads and loads and loads and loads of different things. It's much better to get the higher marks to go in deep on one important and maybe hard, complex thing. OK, so how do you know what thing that is? You ask your lecturer. You ask your lecturer for specific targeted reading. OK, so that was the first bit of advice. That was the first method I was talking about. The second one's a bit more general, OK? This is a general method for learning anything, whether it's from a, a, a book, a journal article, a video or whatever. Anything that you can have access to a couple of times, like a, a one-off lecture, it's not going to be so easy because you have to be able to repeat this to do the method. I'm going to call this the rule of three because you're going to do this thing three times. So if you're trying to get to grips with a complex journal article or uh, whatever, here's what you're going to do. Step one, you're going to skim through it, OK? You're not really trying to get to grips with all the complex ideas on this first reading. You're just really orientating yourself in the world of this article. What kind of things is it arguing for? What techniques is it using? What's it doing? What's it not doing? And you might mark up, you know, on paper or if you've got an electronic copy, you're going to mark up. Uh, oh, yeah, here's a really useful bit. OK, this this bit seems like a bit of a tangent, so kind of we'll ignore that. You do all that on that first reading, but you're not really taking it all in. Then you go through it again. The second step's probably the most important. You go through a really slow and careful reading. Anything you've marked up as a tangent, you skip. Anything you've marked up as being super important, you go even slow on and you really try and take that in. So this is the step where you really try to get to grips with what's going on in this article. It's much easier doing it on that second pass if you've already skimmed through it once already. I don't really know why that is, but, but trust me, the second time through, it just seems like so much easier. And that's kind of why the first reading through, just, just do it quickly because you're not going to get so much out of that one. What I would also do on this second read through is try and identify the real core, the, the crux of this argument. OK, try and identify like a paragraph of so where everything hangs together, where the kind of real heart of the argument of this paper is. And then you're going to come back to that in step three. Third step, what you try and do is consolidate the information you've got. This is kind of something you would only do if you're really studying this article or this video or whatever to do an assessment on, or you think it's going to come up later in the course or whatever. So you want to go into loads of depth, you do step three. So what we're going to do is write down in our own words, like as bullet points or a, a kind of quick summary or whatever, what we think is the main kind of crux of this article based on the passage that we identified in step two. OK, so maybe it's a paragraph where the author is setting out their main evidence or the main data or the main philosophical argument or whatever. We put it in our own words briefly as bullet points and we pay very, very close attention to the specific wording and phrasing that the author used. So here we're going in kind of super detailed. We're looking at the exact words they've used. Maybe we're taking out quotes and we're being kind of super careful of all the little nuances to make sure that we haven't missed out on any shades of meaning or whatever, OK? So this level of detail, you can't do that in interpreting the whole essay. That would just take you way too long. That's why in the second step, we try and identify this kind of crucial paragraph or crucial couple of paragraphs, and then we go super detailed. So what you're going to get after these three stages is a general idea of what the whole thing's about. You're going to be kind of familiar with the structure of it and the important points of it. And you're going to be super, super familiar with the most important point of the paper. So if someone asks you, like, can you summarize this argument or what's it about? You should be able to just kind of get that off the top of your head and be accurate. And it's going to seem to anybody talking to you or seeing what you write that you know a huge amount, a huge level of detail about the whole paper, 
when in fact you've gone into super detail on just one little bit of it. Okay, so that's the rule of three. That's what I use when I'm reading stuff to be able to write my philosophy about. It's something I used as a student. I've told it to my students and they found it useful. So I hope you find that useful too. If you've got any comments or suggestions on these methods, leave me a comment down below. So thank you for watching this far. I really appreciate it. If you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find this information. Why not subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. Next video in the series, I'm going to be talking about some practical academic skills, referencing and avoiding plagiarism. So I hope to see you back for that. <laughs>